remedial facilitative or preventive counseling this is these are all one remedial facilitative or adjustive counseling sorry and then we have crisis counseling so at least these four should help you to um, know that there are differences or there are types of counseling so if we took the form of mental counseling this uh, um, is concerned with ongoing life situation that spans through an individual's lifestyle it focuses on the various things at various stages of life that one goes through preventive as the name suggests are counseling that is given to help people avoid issues that are consequential so if you know that if you um, you snap a match and it will light and there's petrol and it would inflame the situation then you avoid putting the match and lighting it by petrol so then you prevent it and so Remedial are also done as counseling that's often thought as helping an individual progress from a deficient stage of a functional stage. So sometimes you get into a situation or condition that needs steps to help you get yourself out of it like so that you can become functional once more. So where you are deficient, you are helped to gain some confidence in those areas, some support in those areas, then it takes you out of that condition crisis is essentially the help given in situations where all developmental preventive and remedial measures that the individual is offered breaks down breaks down so if you put the first three together developmental preventive remedial or facilitative and they break down this person usually would be said to be in crisis because then that person needs extra attention and then the person really has gone so down and this one needs serious adjustments serious adjustments so the person would get into a condition of serious maladjustment and so the service provided will help the person adjust and adjust adequately so briefly these are and the aims of counseling is to provide insights insight another aim is to provide for self-awareness another aim is to provide for self-acceptance self-actualization problem solving skills counseling helps one to improve on problem solving skills and then acquisition of social skills as well so at this stage we will draw the curtain on last week's um, discussions as we had on the concept of guidance and counseling and as advertised today we are going to look at the historical development of the counseling movement and to do that we are taking just a quick break and then when we are back we will start the discussions take your piece of paper no, your notebooks as well and then your pens pencils and then the numbers write them down because it's going to be an interactive uh, session this evening the numbers to call or whatsapp on are or s0503923158 0503923158 same for sms or you reach us live on facebook radio windy bay 98.3 fm and you stick and stay with us so we'll be right back after the break Thank you. 
with you, sir. Dear listener, welcome back, and I believe you're doing the watching as well on Facebook. And let's advertise this evening in the program is Radio Lecture EDC 351. And we are today looking at the concept of um, the history of guidance and counseling, the historical um, concept of the guidance and counseling movement. And today, many of us have heard about guidance and counseling and um, it looks like story just um, dropped from somewhere it never dropped from anywhere there has been historical um, 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 data that is made available to make us know where we have come from and where we get into and so guidance and counseling that is in the previous um, um, days of old the 20th century stemmed from the ancient Greek and the Roman empires where then um, modeling was the key. Modeling was the role um, parents and um, society used to groom young men and women to condition them for the future. So as um, Plato had indicated early on in one of his write-up in the 20th century, um, he made mention that um, for, and I, I would want to quote as it is, says that in his writings on the ideal society, Plato suggested that each worker should be assigned to the occupation for which he has naturally been made to fit or he's naturally fitted for. And so this stands as old as Plato's days in the 20th century. And so we cannot um, delineate the fact that in previous um, times, until recent or modern times, guidance existed and it was done through modeling. So if somebody was identified based on his interest in certain areas of um, the, um, um, commerce, practice or enterprise, the person was given opportunity to be given training in that direction, which helps that individual to come up with a career option. And so it helped that individual to um, make a living or became employed. So in, 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 in that context, the functionality of the individual was also key because then um, the individual being identified as ready to work was there and people monitoring the individual's capacity to do the work that his interest was in was also there. And so it made it a bit more easier for them to match personality or trait to job and then satisfaction was also there. So moving on, um, it is also believed that one's ability, if well suited and putting into the right place or right interest, gives job satisfaction and so that is one that we need to pay attention to we make also a quick dash to jess b um, davis who was also an educationist and he was of the opinion that once there was devotion to time and active counseling of boys and girls and we vigorously promoted them in their interest areas. It also helped them to be able to um, stay in their interest areas. And this is by Jesse B. Davis. He was an educationist. That was as far back as the Pearson's days, that's 1908. And we have Frank Pearson's who also in 1908, through such concerted efforts through the American um, Revolution, introduced what is called the organized guidance the organized guidance that's the concept of organized um, guidance which helped most young men and women to identify with themselves what was their interest and this does not just happen let's take a brief a quick read about who person actually was and how he went about it one of Frank Parsons' important contribution to the career guidance movement was his conceptual framework for helping an individual select a career. He came out with a three-part formulation to guide people in their career choice. Parsons indicated that firstly, 
the individual should have a clear understanding of himself, aptitude, ability, interest, value, attitude, and other qualities that he or she has. Second, knowledge of the requirement and condition of service, compensation, opportunities for progress, and other prospects in the different kinds of work which the individual must consider. And the last third was true reasoning on the relations of these two groups of facts that would help the job seeker to choose a career was necessary. And so this major work on Frank Parson that is titled Choosing a Vocation was a very great success in the uh, guidance um, history, in, in the history of guidance and counseling actually. And so from 1908 um, right up to 1910 there was a conference, a national conference on vocational counseling that was held in Boston. And the second one was held in New York in 1912. And the third took place in Michigan in 1913. And so these are some of the historical facts as antecedented in the proclaim that um, the, in the olden days or in times of old, guidance was still necessary and guidance had a place in our career selection processes as life options as well. And so without um, spending much time on this uh, gentleman who is so renowned, we look at another person here who is called Edmund Williamson. It's Edmund Williamson. Edmund published How to Counsel Students in his publication, How to Counsel Students, made a tremendous impact on the career guidance movement. So how to counsel students is critical and key because if students were in school and they never knew what they were coming out for and what was out there to meet their qualification in terms of employability or employable skills and which skills they were best fitted for, then I believe there was going to be more chaos. As witnessed in the early days of the revol Industrial Revolution in the Americas where there was so much crowding, so much crowding that people rather became violent and there were chaos in the streets. People could not find jobs, the type of jobs they wanted. And so people were just all over the place, left hopeless. But these men and women of great repute came up with these concepts to help structure the interface so that there was a lot more um, sanity when it came to employment and development. And so this is a bit on the history of guidance and counseling or the guidance movement as it started. Carl Rogers also played a key influential role when he also published the book Counseling and Psychotherapy. This was published in 1942. And so Carl Rogers emphasized non-directive counseling or client-centered counseling and con then directive counseling procedures. All he sought to do was that counseling was supposed to pay attention and give the clients interactions and verbalizations such that the processes will help the client develop a relationship of mutual respect that was towards the client gaining an understanding of self and taking steps to control his or her life. And so it wasn't like you were supposed to always be um, told what to do, but you were to be given the opportunity to look beyond what to do. And then there was to be a communication such that the interest of the client was taken into consideration. And then there was a built up conversation or interaction through counseling such that the client was in and was happy with whatever that was offered or was available so that it fitted his interest and not just because it was available. So same, as contributions made by others, we have in the 1950s, Ellie Ginsberg, Annie Rose, and Donald Super, 
who also made uh, resounding publications on career development in occupational choice theories. And these have become landmark um, interventions and theories when it comes to career and career guidance. And so um, when today, if you come into career guidance, these, key, these names are major um, 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 monuments when we want to discuss career or career guidance. We have Ellie Ginsberg, Annie Rose, and Donald. Super. So a quick dash to um, our local environment, that is when you come back home to Ghana. We we'll want to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll look at the movement and how it also has played its role in Ghana. And so we'll be right back. Welcome back once again and the program is Radio Lecture EDC 351 and today we are looking at the historical um, movement that is um, associated with um, the guidance concept and so we are overwhelmed by the history because it looks as though it happened only in the West but we have that which also happened in our place that's in Africa and in Ghana specifically. As cited by Akume 2003, um, there has been a lot of history concerned with African traditions. And so in Africa, we have cited that, or it's been cited that there has always been guidance in various forms when it comes to our cultural practices. The other day in class, students, if you remember, I made mention of this proverb or this saying that and it has biblical and it has um, Quranic um, 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 semblance. There are verses in the Quran and there are verses in the Bible. And I'll throw it to you out there to look them for as you do the calling and you tell us where you can find them that um, you, you can never be friends with a good person for a long while and this will not show in the things you do. And so our elderly use some of these as guidance for us. They will sit you down sometimes in the morning and then they would admonish you, they would talk to you when it was such that um, things were getting out of hand. Sometimes you even just met an elderly person in the market space or market way in the alley, and then he or she would call you and tell you, hey, this that you are doing, have you seen this man down the street, that drunkard, this is how he started. And that was enough to prompt you to understand that you needed to be on your guard you need to be on your guard and then there were also some forms of training that came through mentoring 
sometimes we have heard and it's documented that even our kings our chiefs before they are enthroned they are sent to see some uncles some grand aunties somewhere for them to groom them so they can become wise kings or queens and so these were all guidance that were offered them to help them to rule and rule well as wise people who were leaders of communities and so um, if you came into some of the historic um, 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 issues that cons is concerned with guidance in Ghana, um, there, are, there were reforms in Ghana that sought to also help youth development. And same site in Akume 2003, youth employment de divisions or departments of the Ministry of Labor then, and education, social welfare, were strategically placed to help ensuring that curricula or curriculum matched what industry sought for. Curriculum sought what industry um, um, sought for. so that um, when you went to school and you came out, you were not learning something different from what industry was looking for. And so deliberately, guidance led itself to helping develop policy. Guidance lent itself in helping develop. There were new structures in the education system as in curriculum, and there was need to help um, address these by bringing the new um, curriculum to the student by making the student interested. And so the guidance um, services offered the students the opportunity to say towards vocation and then they were trained appropriately towards these areas so they could remain relevant on the job market. On the job market. So I would announce the, radio, um, the lines again as I would soon bring the elections and discussions. The number to call is 0503923158. What's up on same number? Or you can post your questions on Facebook. That's Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. And so that is it. We quickly would look at the objectives of the guidance and counseling programs in Ghanaian schools. The program was envisaged and designed to achieve the following, to help students, one, to help students develop effective learning skills, to help students develop effective learning skills, as explained early on, two, to enable students to take advantage of school facilities. So sometimes you were in school and you never even knew the library um, contained books that could practically help you to learn on your own. So the guidance service helps students to take advantage of school facilities. The program also helped to develop consultation service for the school. So consultation enables parents to interact with the school counselor, teachers, and head of the school with a view of assisting students to realize their educational, vocational, or social personal needs. And so today we have the PTA system coming out of these where there is an interface for parents and teachers, providers of education, to meet and look at which gaps need there to be filled or given attention so students will not just come out and come out as people who have learned, but people whose learning has a place on the job market and the environment they found themselves. And it also helped to provide follow-up services for students. So sometimes they will need for um, the school or teachers 
two follow up on students at various levels of their education, especially at home and then sometimes on the next level of their education when they had progressed from one class to the other so they could find out whether these students were really doing what they needed to do. And so there was also um, need to store students' data properly. It helped to. So confidentiality was also key. I mean, how students were performing, what they were doing, traces were done on them. So data was also collected. Data is collected through this process to help maintain data for students as they are enrolled, how many came out a particular year, how many are employed a particular year, are all data government need to plan and then formulate policies. All right, so these are some of the key areas um, why it was necessary, that is objectives of the guidance and counseling programs in Ghana. So the movement traversed just beyond, um, beyond guidance into guidance and counseling programs. So we have initially looked at the concept of guidance and counseling, and now we are looking at the historical um, 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 connotations, how the history has guided the movement where it started from, and we say we have that of the West, we have that which was also with us here. But the conceptualization is we are looking at our environment and how guidance as a concept, counseling as a concept, has come to help us to reform, to change some of the policies, some of the educational directives that are not relevant to modern education. Guidance helps in these services, same as counseling. And so, as I have announced, I'm looking forward to receiving calls from you on 0503923158. We'll take a quick break as I wait for your text messages and calls, and then we wrap up on the program. Thank you very much. So welcome back and um, we have from our Facebook comment page, um, name is uh, Mauno Glokuma, Glokuma, forgive me if I didn't get your name right, says kindly review the types and aims of counselling at the latter part of the lecture. So last week um, it came up, I have done that but I would briefly go through it again. So types of counselling, I mentioned preventive counselling. I mentioned developmental counseling, I mentioned remedial or facilitative or adjustive counseling, 
and then crisis counseling. These are the types I mentioned. And for the aims of counseling, I mentioned a few of them. I said counseling provides insight, 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 I-N-S-I-G-H-T, insight. And counseling also provides for self-awareness, self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-actualization or individuation, which um, also we have problem-solving skills, we have psychological education, acquisition of social skills, cognitive change, and then we have restitution. We have restitution. So I believe I have answered you appropriately. So we are here. Um, I'm here briefly for your questions. Okay, there are some pouring in again. Oh, thank you. So please, uh, since you're moving fast, so please try and repeat some of them main points. All right, I have done just that for you. Thank you very much for the prompt. I'm grateful. Uh, and then um, up there it says that I think Amos says streaming life on Facebook. Guidance and counseling history made simple. Thank you very much for that um, comment out there. And okay, I said, um, there, there's, is there anyone up there once again before? Okay, um, Johannes, Johannes, I am, um, Domenikov cannot do away with them. Yes, um, I am also of the opinion, that's why cons um, contextualization comes in. We should have understood our history well. That's one of the primary things we need to learn about our own history. And so we do not just consume everything that is brought to us. And like I cited in the proverb, the Akan version is what I use, that literally, um, when the biblical version resonates like this, good character, um, bad character, um, what is, what, what, what's that? Uh, bad character definitely will corrupt a good character. And so if you are, abreast with your history, you would understand that our elderly has always found a place to protect young men and women from the experiences they have had previously. And so if you are one out there, then you must Understand that our history is rich. Our history, Aklunyo, uh, is my name. Okay, thank you very much. Well, my question: What effective measures can be taken to improve modern guidance and counselling from the works? And well, I'm not getting the second word, but of past researches. Well, the only way you can remain relevant based on this question is to have time to read more works on people or persons who have researched in the areas of your interests of research. And so if it's about guidance, it's about counseling, then you need to read and understand concepts. You need to understand theories. You need to understand techniques. Then you would be well vested in the area of guidance and counseling, then I believe your problem would have been dealt with. Any other questions on our, our page? And then we may have to draw the curtains here. And so, yes, acknowledged um, from my brother Paul, I would want to say, um, if I move too fast for you, I'm sorry about that, forgive me. And I, would, I think I'm now taking my time to speak one after the other so you can assimilate as well thank you very much dear listener for doing the listening this evening and i would want to take the bow at this stage so it has been radio lecture on radio night um, and windy bay 98.3 fm and today we have looked at the historical development of the counseling movement 
and it is courtesy edc 351 from the department of educational foundations my name is samuel Ofoidankwa. thank you for doing the listening and i say have a good night